breach is widening. I've got to close this now. Almost there. I just need a minute to... Last few parts have been set prior to the expedition to the Delta Quadrant as those missions, despite their strange placement as side missions, do have some bearing on events to come. In order to ease us back into the events of 2410 and the Kabali, we're picking up on the final mission of the Delta Alliance before the start of the Iconian War. As a recap, Starfleet, the Klingons and the Romulan Republic have formed a force to create allies in the Delta Quadrant in order to prepare for the return of the Iconian threat. Among our first allies were the Kabali, however they were under attack from the Vardwar because they had secured a vault of suspended Vardwar and were transforming those who died into new Kabali. The Alliance attempted to remain neutral, but then the Vardois moved against us and we had to involve ourselves. It transpired that engineered neural parasites, the Bluegills, were manipulating the hierarchy of the Vardois into combat, and on removing them we thought the war was over. We are about to learn that this isn't so. We have a situation on Kabali Prime. You and I were both asked by name to help. All that I've been told is that the Vaudoir have launched a large offensive and have retaken the area in front of their temple, the place where they keep unconscious Vaudoir stored. They need our help to retake the area, though I have a feeling something else is going on. Can you help with the situation? We board the Anglia after resupplying at Delta Command in the Solani Dyson Sphere and set a course for Kabali Prime, a familiar route of recent days, and meet up with the Rhode Island and Captain Kim. The Vardwar are making a new push into the system, and we could use your help. The Rhode Island is assisting the new Kabali flagship Sansar, but you know the Vardwar. They're relentless. Wait, 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 are the Vardwar still attacking Kabali Prime? I thought we settled this. Ask them if you can get one of them to have a reasonable discussion. Eldex has been less than cooperative since Gaul's death. We know he's leading the remaining Vardwar forces, and there's no signs that the neural parasites are still influencing them which is the only good news. The Vaudoir won't stop their assaults until the Kabali surrender the remaining stasis pods, but the Kabali government refuses to do so unless the Vaudoir agree to peace talks. We're at an impasse. This is partly what I feared. Eldex made it clear that he was helping us to overthrow Gaul, the former leader of the Vardois, only because of Gaul's affiliation with the Bluegills. He did repeatedly state that he didn't want his people enslaved to them, but touted himself as a patriot for the supremacy. Clearly, now with Gaul out of the picture, Eldex continues this conflict of the Vardois' own volition. Understandable in some regards, as the Kabali still have numerous Vardois effectively captive. However, the Kabali are ready to talk, should the Vardwar simply stand down. One more group inbound. Brace yourselves. The Kabali have done much in the recent months to bolster their defences. They have numerous satellites and stations in orbit, and their new flagship, the Samsar, has been designed with inputs from the Delta Alliance, but is of completely Kabali construction and design. It uses a mixture of Kabali Polaron technology and photon torpedoes, and is a very durable ship, all things considered. Her commander is Hanshon Jatanian, whom we've fought alongside in prior ground engagements. Thank you for arriving so quickly. I'm still not sure what happened. All I know is that we lost contact with the temple, and several hours later a large Vardwar fleet attacked. However, I'm still not sure if the Vardwar have entered the temple. If they have, they may already be reactivating their soldiers in stasis. We're safe here, for now, but the battle on the ground continues. No one can enter the temple, and the Vardwar are seizing control of the surrounding area. 
We need to get the Vardois off the ground, which means seizing back your temple. So ground teams it is then. The three of us should prep away teams. Sounds like a plan. I've located a safe area in the trenches for transport. My team and I will go down first and secure the area. See you there. I thought Admiral Tuvok and the Voyager were overseeing this sector. Can we expect their help? Or command? Voyager is currently on a high priority operation in Vaudoir controlled space. Any comm chatter could give away their position. Whatever they're doing, Tuvok says it's important. But that's all I know. Poor timing. Jitanian, we're only two ships. It sounds like you're going to have to provide the bulk of this operation. My officers and I will join you. The Samsar will return to the dock with a small repair team. But I'm sending the majority of my crew to the city. We cannot allow the Vodwar to take control of it as well. Our flagship will be of no use to us if the planet is lost. In the meantime, the Rhode Island and Anglia can stay up here to patrol. They'll be our eyes in the sky. Hail out. Tarsi, you have the bridge. And we thought things would die down now. At least this is just a smaller assault team we're dealing with, as opposed to a full-on Vardwar invasion. Captain Kim and Hanchon Chitanyan are already here, so let's discuss our plan moving forwards. The Kabali forces are spread thin, and the Vodwar are making a push toward the temple. If I may, I have a suggestion for our plan of attack. What's your plan, Captain? Hanshin Jatanian and his team will attack the outer area of the trenches, making their way to the temple. My away team will move to the opposite end of the trenches and support the remaining Kabali soldiers there. While they're holding the flanks, your team and I will push through the center and strike the Vodwar in the temple courtyard. Your thoughts? You'll be with us and not your team. Can they manage without you? They're more than capable to deal with this situation. And any Kabali soldiers they find can help them secure the outskirts. We'll be the ones going through the heart of the battle. If they fail, we would be cut off, but it would be quicker. Jutania, any objections? None. My team is eager to prove themselves. You and your allies have set quite an example for us to live up to. We'll support the forces at the other end of the trenches and then make our way to the temple. Hopefully we'll be able to meet up with you before the final assault. Alright then, let's get through this. We have to help those Kabali. Immediately we encounter a Vardwar group who have just overwhelmed our defensive barricade. Before they can finish off the Kabali, however, we step in to drive off the Vardwar soldiers. It's a close battle in the trenches with little room to manoeuvre. Often the only way to take cover is to back up around a bend. It looks like our allies here were surprised by a Vardwar drop transporter. We aid them as quickly as we can, but they cannot continue with us. When they're stable, we turn our attention back on the activating transporter pad. Here they come. I think it's safe to say we're turning the Vardwar's forward momentum. Take out that drop pod. As we press through the trenches, overhead Vardwar walkers trudge towards the city, fortunately not glancing to the sides to see our strike team. We press through the muck and rain, the noise of combat making our progress rapid means we don't have to conceal our presence. We come upon newly dropped pods and find another point of skirmish as a Kabali team tries to repel the invaders. We're almost there. We spot movement ahead, but it's Jutanian and his team, so we move up to talk to them, regrouping at the foot of the bridge of the temple. Looks like the Bentham Guard have joined the fray at some point too. Good to have them here. Jutanian, glad you made it. Our scouts report that the temple is heavily defended. We still have some Vodwar attacking our flanks, but my soldiers insist they can keep them occupied long enough for us to retake the temple. Are you ready for the final push? Sounds a plan. How are the other areas holding up? There are other areas of the trenches in need of aid. My team and I could go help them while Captain Kim and his team stay with you. Or, if you think you can assault the temple alone, Captain Kim will rendezvous with his officers as well. 
However, I highly recommend you bring all of us in for your attack on the temple. We have a bit of a choice here now that affects the next encounter. Going it alone is obviously harder, but you get an achievement for doing it that way. But for now, we need in quickly, so we're going to bring everyone. Are you sure you want all of us to attack the temple? Indeed. Let's go. Guarding the temple is a single squad with two mechs. Sustained fire from our entire team is enough to quickly whittle down their numbers, but the walkers get off a lucky shot, the concussion of which sends us sprawling into the river below. By the time we make it back up to the other side of the bridge, the battle is almost over with only one mech left. Oh, well, that was hairy. And soggy. How are we looking, Kim? The temple was secure, and the doors are still locked, which means the Vaudoir didn't break in either. Let's see. Ah, uh, okay. I've seen this sort of algorithm before. I'll have the door open in no time. After that, we can figure out what happened to the temple's security system. It shouldn't have done this. Right, well, at least it's good that the temple's unopened. Jutanian, do you need a hand up here? I don't deny that we'll need support. My team is one of the few still intact. Captain Kim's away team should meet up with us soon, but we don't know what kind of numbers we'll be up against. However, the temple itself should be free of Vaudoir. If I may suggest, perhaps only you and Captain Kim should enter, and your officers can stay here and help us hold the area. This isn't the first time I've been asked to leave my people outside of this temple, but fine, you can have my troops. Just don't get them killed. At least all the Vaudoir here are in stasis pods. Let's take a look around. I want to know why the Cavalli lost control of their security systems. This chamber is one of many that house in stasis Vardois from 900 years ago. As mentioned, the Cavalli have been waiting for the pods to expire, then rebirthing the dead as more Cavalli. It's how they reproduce. The morality of such a thing is for another day, however, as the Vardois are refusing to sit right down and talk. Right now, however, as Kim says, we have to see what compromised the temple's security if it wasn't the Vats. That's... that's not right. According to these readings, the occupant of this pod was... me? But the name on it is... Ket... Must be a computer glitch. Could be a symptom of a bigger problem, but whoever was in this pod is gone now. Looks like it was open before the problem started. Hold on. I'll access the temple security footage. Maybe that can show us something. Good idea. We're both pretty familiar with Kabali technology by now. Let's have a look. That's... That's me. But from over 30 years ago. What in the world? Stay back! Are you with the Vidians? What do you want from me? Ketan, you have to calm down. My name is Jet Laya. I'm here to help you. That's not my name! Where am I? Where is Voyager? I need to contact my ship. Wait! Come back! Jitlaya? And me? Hold on. There's more security footage. This is the last thing that was recorded. Voyager, this is Ensign Harry Kim. If you get this message, I'm in an unknown alien prison. I've escaped my captors and I'm looking for a way out. I'll send another message with my coordinates as soon as I can. Come, come find me. That... that was me. From over 30 years ago, in my old Voyager uniform. And they're turning me, him, into a Kabali. They knew. This whole time I've been here, they knew. And Lindsay, Jitlaya, she knew. I know I've had a difficult time accepting the Kabali, but they keep too many secrets. They should have told me told us about this okay i think i agree but moving too quick uh who's who's jet liar jet liar was is my friend i knew her as lindsay ballard she was an engineer on voyager we went to the academy together she taught me how to ice skate we studied together and shared peanut butter sandwiches and i was more than a little in love with her lindsay died on an away mission 
The Kabali found her body, revived her, gave her a second life. But she still remembered Voyager. She tried to come back, but... It didn't work out, did it? From what I understand, the Kabali biology and instincts sort of override everything. Rebirth does more than rewrite your genetics. It changes who you are. Lindsay was different. She was Kabali. Eventually, she was convinced she should embrace that part of her. She left Voyager with her new family, and I never saw her again. When I was posted to Kabali Prime, I wanted to talk to her, just to see how she was. She didn't respond to my messages. Now I know why. Yeah, and you think this other you has been here since before you arrived? And for that matter, hang on, how are there two Harry Kims? A lot of strange things happened on Voyager's trip through the Delta Quadrant. During our second year here, the ship and everyone on it were duplicated. It was a freak accident, an encounter with a subspace divergence field we still can't completely explain. But two Voyagers, sharing the same point in space-time, it was a recipe for disaster. We tried to cooperate, to find some way to save both ships, but... But you didn't save them both, right? I'm... I'm from the duplicate ship. Captain Janeway sacrificed it so one Voyager could survive. The other Harry was killed in a hull breach before that happened. Captain Janeway sent me and Ensign Wildman's baby to his Voyager before she self-destructed our ship. It made sense at the time. I'm Harry Kim. I have all my memories, my knowledge, same as him. We were exactly alike in every way. Except one of us got to keep living, and the other one didn't. Except now it's changed. It's changed, all right. Best I can guess is that a Kabali ship must have found his body floating in space. It's a million to one shot, but... Lindsay might have remembered our coordinates when we were duplicated and known where to start looking. They must have spent decades reconstructing him and putting him through their rebirth process. I don't know whether to be impressed or horrified. I think I'll go with both. Well, at least it's not an evil clone or time travel. It's just the original Kim died and you're a quantum replacement. If you want to get technical, Harry and I are the same person. We have the same memories, the same knowledge. We both hate the cold, and we love music, and we both like mushrooms and onions on pizza. And we share a soul, I guess you could say, if you go for that sort of thing. Quantum duplication is a difficult thing to summarize. It's only happened a few times. I don't even understand it, and I wouldn't be alive without it. So we're not dealing with like a parallel Kim, just an alternate you from about 30 years ago. Are you uh, gonna be okay about I'll this? I'll be okay. A little shaken up, but... Captain Janeway once told me, we're Starfleet officers. Weird is what we do. And this certainly applies. You're the right person to ask, so what's your take on the situation? From what we saw on the security footage, it looks like the other me has taken control of the entire base. That's not too surprising. Not only does he have all the knowledge of a Starfleet officer, the rebirth process transformed his brain. The Kabali's six-lobed brains give them natural abilities in mathematics, physics, wave phenomena, everything he'd need to know to do this. He's still wearing his comm badge, though. I can tap into it. You should try talking to him first. Try to calm him down and convince him to surrender. You want me to talk to him? Wouldn't you know your mind better than me? Not yet. He's already scared and confused. Seeing me before he gets his bearings, it will just make things worse. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll hail him, I guess, and see if we can talk this out. So, a quantum duplicate is an exact copy of a person, and it doesn't really matter who was around first, just that for a time, there were two identical Kims existing in the same space-time continuum. Starfleet! Wait, I, I don't recognize you. You're not from Voyager. And your uniform? This is a trick! I don't know who you really are, but stay away from me. I don't want any trouble. I'm just trying to get back to my ship. You can tell whoever you're working for that Captain Janeway's coming back for me. She won't leave anyone behind. Okay, Harry, this isn't a trick. You've actually been in stasis for a long time, over 30 years by my count, and as for the uniform... He's it... severed the comm link. Oh. But I've got a lock on his coordinates. He's deep in the base, down in the old Vaudoir tunnels that even the Kabali don't enter very often. And he's locked down all the main corridors that lead to his location. 
There's a way, though. There's emergency climbing equipment here. The Kabali put it in a few months ago in case they lost power during the Vaudoir attacks. We could use it to cross the chasm and get closer to where he is. Am I doing this alone, or are you coming with? I'll be right behind you. But it's time to see if I can talk some sense into the other me. He wants to contact Voyager, but if he does, he'll reveal their position. Unless we stop him, Harry either ruins Voyager's mission and possibly gets them killed or captured, or he finds a ship, sets a course for their coordinates, and gets blasted by the Vaudoir. All right, all right. Just, just quickly, just throwing it out there. He might be too deep or whatever, but um, why don't we just use the transporters? Good idea. Kim to Rhode Island. We need an emergency transport to... Kim to Rhode Island. Can you hear me? Kim to Jitanian. Kim to... Are you mocking me or being serious? Hail to Anglia. He's locked out external comms. Probably wants to stop anyone left in here from calling for help. I'm afraid the zip lines are the only option. Unless you can fly. Fly? I read a book once that said the art of flying is just throwing yourself at the ground and missing, but uh, I don't want to try that now. While we descend, Kim jumps back on comms. I know you're confused. But you have to trust us. What is this? Another me? You expect me to trust a shapeshifter? Alright, and we're down. These caves look a lot more natural down here. This must have been a subterranean system that the Valois built into 900 years ago as a bunker from their walls. Right, let's try and get to the other Kim, shall we? Stay back! I'm warning you! The circuits are completely fried. Let's find another door. Ah, Captain Kim. I didn't hear you land. Nicely done. Looks like we're gonna have to find another way around, though. It's not long across the rocky terrain before we find another similar door. He's trying to override it again. Give me a second. He's clever, this you from the past. I mean, it could be the Kabali brain, but uh, it's all downhill from 30. Let's keep going. As we delve deeper into the seldom trod tunnels, the thunder of the waterfalls from the river above fades and the air is thick with dust. We can find logs on some of the terminals spread throughout this network. It says that this stasis site was set up to house medical, artistic and scholarly types, people here to help rebuild the culture of the Vardois after their re-emergence. However, as the war escalated, the priority was given over to more soldiers, and the cultural aspects, such as teachers, were reduced from 12% to 3.5% of the capacity. A larger segment still was given over to those age 15 and younger, with the intent to train them as soldiers and put them through military academies when the Vardois re-emerged. Okay, Captain Kim, what the hell is this? Have we stepped into a generator room or something? Huh. It looks like he's modified the empty stasis pods to send out bursts of electricity. Tricky. I might be able to slow it down from here, but we can't stop what he's done without access to the main console, which is on the other side of the room. I'll stay here and do what I can to delay the bursts, but you'll have to get past them to shut them down. You know, I would argue with you. Now, let's see. But you know systems better than me and can counter this tampering. If you can, keep him distracted too while I sneak through these. Got it. You'll need to move through when they're in their disabled state. Who are you? Why do you keep trying to stop me getting back to my ship? I'm... I'm you. Harry, this isn't going to be easy to explain. Liar! You can't beat me! I'm your quantum duke. Remember the power failures? The proton bursts? There were two Voyagers. Two Voyagers? Yeah, right. How would that happen? It was the spatial scission. Think, Harry. You know it's theoretically possible. Maybe, but that doesn't explain why I'm here, or why you don't want me to get back to Voyager. It's been 32 years, Harry. Oh, 38. You, you died. Sorry, sorry, I'll oh, shut up. I don't feel dead! The Kabali brought you back. But to do so, they had to change your DNA. 
make you Kabali. Liar! You can't just change someone like that! It's not possible! I didn't think it was possible either. <laughs> Magic. What? Took over my life? In a manner of speaking, but it was my life too. Liar! You're working with the Vidians! With the Vidians? What have Vidians got to do that? Oh, right, they were there at the time of this quantum duplication. Ooh. There aren't any Vidians here. You, you have to let us help you. You steal my life and now you want to help me? Why should I believe that? We managed to reach an override console and deactivate the energy to this grid, breaking down the defences that Kabali Kim or Keaton created. Captain Kim then catches up. Good work. We should keep moving. Harry! Jitlaya, are you okay? How did... General Cunell said there wouldn't be any more secrets. I'm... I'm okay. Harry... I didn't know they'd send you. How long did you know? Harry, I don't think this is the time! How long did you know? I didn't know when I was on Voyager, if that's what you're asking. We need to stop Ketten. He locked the rest of my team away, they're safe. But trapped, we're the only ones who can help him! As lovely as this reunion is, hi, Captain Hale by the way, what is going on? You owe him some answers. It's good to finally meet you. My people are in your debt. We need to move fast. Ketten's not in his right mind. The rebirth process can be difficult under the best conditions and... I don't know. Maybe humans resist the process more than other species. It took me a long time to accept who, what, I was. And that's what's happening to him. Human memories lumped into a Kabali mind. Yes. He doesn't know what happened. I tried to tell him, but he still thinks it's 32 years ago, Voyager is lost in the Delta Quadrant, and we're in league with the Vidians. He's desperate to get home. When Ketten started tampering with the security devices, he tripped an alert that was sent to the Vaudoir. They think their soldiers are waking up which is why they're so desperate to get inside. He's putting us all at risk. We need to help him. Great, their naivety of a fresh cadet in a panicked state with the genius of a Kabali. Action item 238. Resurrect your best friend and give him a second chance for a long life. It's not working out so well, is it? He's made mention several times he's trying to contact Voyager. How would he do that down here with all this antiquated equipment? I'm not familiar with everything in this area. We rarely go down this deep. There are still Vaudoir traps here that make exploration dangerous. However, as far as we understand, this facility was intended as a final shelter for the Vaudoir. It would make sense that they would have had a way to contact the outside world. But if Ketten finds a communication device and uses it to contact Voyager, the Vaudoir will hear his message too. It's your analysis, Kim. Any insight into your younger mind would be useful. Ketten is a danger to himself and to Voyager. If he succeeds in this gambit and contacts Voyager, he'll draw every Vaudoir in the sector to their coordinates. I can't allow that. We have to stop him. He's putting Tuvok and his crew in danger. Then we need to save the both of them. And we do that by apprehending Ketten. Jetlaya, feel free to come with. Just let me get back to Voyager! Well, this room is very foggy, and it appears to be a server room of some sort, and I'm guessing those were the raised server stacks that he's just brought up. It looks like this used to be a server room of sorts, but it's not like one I've seen before. All this is computer storage, and it's massive. 900 year old Vaudoir technology. It's a lot different from anything we have back home. And he's using this to completely block us out. Terrific. There doesn't seem to be a way around this. It would be nice to get a team down here to look at these records. But for now, can you get them out of the way? I'm sure Jidlaya and I can figure out something, given enough time. But if I was on the other side of this, and I am, I'd be trying to stop anyone from moving these. There has to be some sort of reset command. But with our luck, 
It's on the far side of the maze. Jedliah and I will keep Ketan from blocking you in. But you'll need to get through this and reset the servers so they return to their start position. Right, well, can you at least get me a door Think in? Think I can make you a door. Wait here. Harry and Jet Liar move over to tamper with a console and seconds later... You're good to go. I'll monitor the area from here. As with the electricity, we have to go ahead while Kim opens a path and prevents his younger self from countering him. As a side note, I tried for several minutes to try to cheat this maze by just jumping up onto the wall, but I figured it was taking me so much time that I might as well just go through the maze to begin with. What follows is a very long conversation between Kim and Jet Lai as we move throughout this maze. You get an achievement for solving it in two minutes, but I wanted to let them work this out. So we dive into the foggy depths of these towering servers and try to find our way to the other side to lower I'm them. I'm sorry this is how we had to meet again, Harry. That makes two of us. You should have told me. And if we had, what would you have done? I don't know. But I had the right to know you had a copy of me in cold storage. Are you saying he doesn't have the right to rebirth? I... I don't know. This is all a lot to take in at once. Oh, I know it is. Imagine how Ketten feels. I have a good idea. Confused. Angry. Isolated. Ketten died trying to save Voyager. And it happened so quickly, he doesn't even realize what happened. He understood the risks. And he accepted them. Did he really? Think about the man you were then. Joining Starfleet comes with certain duties. I understood that then. And I do now. I seem to remember a kid who was as scared as I was. All we wanted was to get home. Yeah. I was scared back then. I missed my family. But I did what I had to do to get back to them. You got back home, Harry. You did what you had to do. Ketten didn't get that chance. And I'm sorry for him. But is this better? He has a new life. Ketten can be anything or go anywhere he wants now. As a Kabali, he's not... He's not who he was anymore. And is that a worse option than being dead? No, of course not. But I should have been able to choose. Why? He's your duplicate, Harry, but he's not you. I know what he would want. Do ya? Because you can't even convince Ketten to drop this maze and talk to you. When you put it that way, maybe we are different. He's being so stubborn. He's you, but he's Ketten too. And he's allowed to be both. I wonder if they are even aware that they're still on an open comm line with me. From looking around down here, it seems that this storage level is for Vardwa technology as well as their cultural archives. However, our progress does not go unnoticed and soon Keaton chimes in. Thought you could handle all my tricks, old man. We're working on it, kid. Take all the time you need. You know, you could make this easier. Drop the maze. Talk to us. Why? So you can lie to me again? I'm not lying to you. I know it's a lot to take in, but... Oh my god, they should have sent a ship's counselor. Don't treat me like a child. If you're not lying, then you stole my life. I hate you. You're not my dad. It was my life, too. I didn't steal anything. That's great. So you get to do and be everything I wanted, and I get stuck in a pod? My life hasn't exactly been everything I always wanted. Getting home wasn't easy. But you did get home. I didn't. I understand how you feel, but I cannot change what happened. And if you could, you'd what? Trade places with me? I can't do that. All I can do is try to help you now. Stop lying to me. You don't want to help me. You know that's not true. Maybe. Maybe I do. Doesn't change anything. Okay, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of waiting. I'm bringing down the servers. You can sort this out later in person. It could. Drop the maze. Let us talk to you. With that, we reset the server room and the stacks are withdrawn into the ground once again. Jet Liar and Captain Kim run across to join us and we can proceed to the next trial. It's not working, but if I do this, maybe I can buy some time.
Did he just turn off the floor? We have him. Ket cornered. Without those platforms, though, we have no way to reach him. It's insane. He's manipulating these old defense systems like he's in a Captain Proton hollow. Ah, young minds. Sorry, that was the last dig. Seriously though, you and Jetlag got us this far, you're gonna need to figure this out too. We have command codes that allow us to interface with the older Vaudoir technology. We've never seen the need to replace systems that still work. But it looks like Ketten has made some modifications. I'll need to override his changes. The best I can do right now is to expose the central power cores behind each platform. Okay, you expose the cores as a start. Does it help? Yes, it does. Ketten will be monitoring for any changes in the platform's functionality. But I can modify the central power cores to react to energy weapons. If you shoot the cores, you'll be able to power up the platforms and force them open. But you'll only have a short window before he resets them. If we want to do this, Jetlaya and I will stay here to keep trying to seize control of the network back from Ketten. And there's still that matter of the field protecting him. Well, one thing at a time, I guess, unless you've got any more suggestions. When the Kabali first found this room, the old Vaudoir EPS systems were too degraded to handle all the power. They installed regulators throughout the area as a stopgap measure until they could replace the conduits. Basically, it meant that even if one conduit failed, the network would stay active. Those regulators are still in place, and we can use them to get to Ketten. I'm not following. Jedlaya has command codes we can use to overload the regulators. The chain overload will generate a wave of power that will build until it overloads the generators Ketten is using to maintain the field protecting him. Get these codes into four of the consoles and it will short out the field. Once he's distracted, Jitlaya and I can reset the platforms to their normal state. One last thing. Jitlaya and I can run this program three different ways. The one that would buy you the most time before the platforms are reduced also takes the most of our attention. There's also a balanced option, or, if you don't like either of those, I can spend most of my time trying to counter Ketten's plans. What do you want us to do? Whatever we choose will determine how difficult it will be for you going forward. It's fine. You focus on what you need to do, and I'll shoot out the regulators and go for it. Once again, this is a difficulty select, and I'm going for the most expedient of the options, which in this case is the very hard difficulty. Are you certain you want us to focus our attention on countering Ketten? You'll only have about five seconds after you activate the platforms before he deactivates them. Plenty of time, and I'll compose a sonnet Give on the way. Give us a few more seconds. The cores are exposed. It's your move now. For this, as shooting a core causes the bridge below it to reappear for a few seconds before Keaton's algorithms shut it down again. If one fails while we're on it, we fall into the murky depths below. What are you doing? Are those command codes? Oh... He's trying to access data on the new flagship. I'll keep an eye on him. That's it. Keep giving me the codes. Whatever you're thinking of trying, don't. We're almost there. You keep saying that, but I'm still here. Stand down before this gets any worse. Worse? How can it get worse? I don't want anyone to get hurt. Don't do anything you're going to regret. You're too late. I'm getting back to Voyager, no matter what. Ah, he beamed out. I'm a little concerned as to why he was looking up schematics for the KDC Samsor. This is bad. Ketten used Jitlaya's command codes to access the Kabali flagship in orbit and transport himself to the bridge. Not only that, but he has Voyager's coordinates. If he goes there, the Vaudoir will see it as an act of war. We'll lose Ketten, the Kabali flagship, and probably Voyager 2. Samsar's impressive, but no match for a fleet of Vardwar ships. Exactly. We have to stop that ship. 
Agreed. We'll beam back to our ships and try and stop him before he leaves orbit. I'm coming too. I helped find Ketten's body. I've watched over him during the rebirth process. It's my responsibility to help him now. Please, you must let me do this. I need to fix the mistakes I've made. Very well, I'm sure Captain Kim will take you. So, with Keaton on the Samsar, we return to the Anglia and hail him. I told you to stay away! Why won't you listen? I'm going to find Voyager and I won't let you stop me. I can arm this ship. Don't make me do it. I don't want to hurt you, but I will if you keep trying to stop me from getting back to Voyager. Voyager is deep in enemy territory. If you go to them, you'll get yourself killed. Maybe them too. And you'll lose this flagship. You're not giving me a choice. Computer, arm all weapons and fire. KDC Samsar powers up, and with most of the crew down on Kabali Prime with Hunch and Tanian, only a skeleton crew was aboard. With the command codes he also has, it seems he's been able to usurp control of the vessel, at least for the moment. However, Kim isn't really looking for a fight, for as we close in there's a burst of energy, and then the Samsar jumps to warp. What was that? Like a disruption beam. He scrambled all of our systems for a second or two and then went to warp. This is not good. He set a course for Voyager. His warp drive's damaged though. He's only going warp six, and I don't think he can push the engines any harder. Not without an engineering team. I know we can catch him. Then we just have to convince him to stop. We set an immediate pursuit course. Well, it seems the Kabali vessel is rather automated if only one person can command all its systems. Then again, most ships can default all controls to the bridge, and even a substantial amount to the captain's chair. We easily catch up on the Warp 6 vessel and again hail Ketan. Give me one good reason why I can't contact Voyager. They're not on any secret mission in enemy territory. I found them. They're in something called Krenum space. I don't even know who the Krenum are. Voyager is trying to get home, just like me. Okay, so Voyager's mission was secret. Honestly, I didn't even know they were in Krenum space. It's been over 30 years, Harry. Admiral Tuvok is in command of Voyager now, and Starfleet's found its way into the Delta Quadrant. They're not lost anymore. Quit trying to confuse me. I know what year it is. I know who my captain is. Look at the star date. Look at everything you've seen. You know there's more to this. Ketten's not responding to hails, but I think if I use the deflector dish to emit a pulse tachyon beam, I can disrupt his engines and force him out of orbit. But he's going to be expecting something like that, which is why I'll distract him with a bit of a light show while you send the real thing from your ship. It takes a couple of seconds to make the necessary modifications, but we go through with that plan. He's out of warp and arming weapons. Get ready. As we drop from warp, we're against a startling backdrop near what looks like a Hirogen com relay. It really doesn't take long to overpower the Samsar. I'm sending you the transporter coordinates for the Samsar's friend. Not a grand first outing for such a vessel, but with no support, Katan was severely limited with what he could do. Pray, you are in Hirogen space, and that is an interesting ship. Oh, just what we need. Hail the Herogen vessel. Ah, a new Kabali battleship. We have heard rumors about the corpse collectors and their new toys. But this is Herogen space. Leave now and leave the ship as a trophy. We'll see how well it performs in a hunt. This skirmish is unavoidable. You can claim it unworthy prey, but they still want it as a trophy, or we can demand that they stand down. Perhaps. But wounded prey can be amusing as well. Or maybe I'll strip it and display its bones as a warning to intruders. We're then forced to engage the Herogen hunting party, which is the most difficult skirmish of this mission in my opinion, as with only the Rhode Island for support, we're completely open from all angles to be attacked. Eventually, there are only two Herogen vessels left, and it's a race between us and the Rhode Island to see who gets to destroy theirs first. It's a tie. The ship is disabled. Sensors are showing the repair teams are trapped in several rooms on board, but they are otherwise unharmed. 
Ketten's on the bridge alone. If I could talk to him, maybe I could convince him to come back home. There's no one who understands all he's going through like I do. And what if he refuses and doesn't want to go back with the Kabali? Ketten's already been reborn. He is Kobali. If he doesn't come with us, he'll be alone. Whatever memories he has of his old life will continue to fracture and fade. Who's going to take him then? Would you? Does he belong back on Earth? A world he won't even remember? We're his family. We'll accept him no matter what. He'd still be welcomed, so he gets to go where he chooses to go. Not where you want him to go. And that will be his decision to make. My father found me when I was lost and confused and trying to fit into a life on Voyager that wasn't mine anymore. He helped me understand what it is to be Kabali. I'm... I'm going to try to do that for Ketten. He thinks we're monsters, but we're not. We love him so much. We wanted him to be a part of our lives. I understand that, and if he chooses to return with you, then that's fine. But this is a conversation that should include him too. I'm going to. I have to see Ketten face to face. It's time to talk this out. Maybe you should talk to him first. Try to calm him down. He's not in the mood to listen to Harry, or me. Well, yeah, that's because one of you freaks him out and the other one's trying to drag him away. I'll do what I can. We step onto the Kabali Bridge, which is a spacious design with the command chair surrounded by banks of controls. This must be how he was able to self-pilot the vessel as far as he did, it seems. Why are you trying so hard to keep me from getting home? I need to... I don't even understand what's going on anymore. Why... why do I look like this? Like them? Okay, so the Kabali rebirthed you. Which means they've brought you back from the dead as one of their own. Have you seen the star date? I saw the star date. What... what happened? How do I get back to Voyager? To my time? How do I get back to my life? You've not been displaced in time, Harry. You died. That was around about 38 years ago. And the Kabali Rebirth is not reversible. I... I died? I... I can't remember. Why can't I remember? Well, you are dead. You're taking my memories from No, no. I won't! I won't forget! I can't forget Voyager. I cannot forget my friends. Even if you do forget them, they're not going to forget you. Most of them are still around. Tuvok's an admiral now, for example, and apparently Tom Paris is out here somewhere, and Jet Liar, Lindsay Ballard, she's like you. Ketten, you have to stop this. If you contact Voyager, you'll... I'm done listening to you. I, I just want to go home. I want my life back. The life you stole from me. I understand. I wanted to be Ensign Lindsay Ballard. I loved my life, my friends, you. And then I died. And that life was gone. I tried to get it back, but I would have been living a lie. So I should just give up who I am? No, I'm saying that life ended. But now you have a chance to live a new one. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Action item 478. Help my best friend own the day. Every day. Even with everything I've done? Forgiven. We don't hold grudges against family. I... I can't tell you what to do, Ken. But the Kabali will be there for you. And... I'll do whatever I can to help. Would you... tell me what happened? Voyager, and how you got home. About Mom and Dad and Libby. I think I want to know. Of course I can. Thank you for your help. 
Kenton is going to have a new life with us. A long and happy one where he can be whoever he wants to be. My people have been outsiders for so long. The other species don't understand us or what we have to do to survive. We want to reach out to them. Be a part of the Quadrant again. And if Ketan wants to reach out and explore? What if he wants to even rejoin Starfleet, for example? If Ketan decides he wants to leave Kabali Prime at some point, that's his choice. He can even rejoin Starfleet. But we will always be his family. Fair enough. Captain Kim, how do you feel? I'm happy for Ketan. He gets a second chance at life. A different one than what he had planned, but that's the way life is. When I graduated from the Academy, I never thought I'd spent seven years lost in the Delta Quadrant. Didn't think it would take me as long as it did to get my own command. Didn't think Lindsay and I would never... That's all in the past now. And it's made me the man I am today. Just like Ketten will be the man he's supposed to be. Well, I'm glad you see it that way, Harry. So, happy endings all round, then? I'm not letting the Kabali completely off the hook, though. Cunell told me there wouldn't be any more secrets, and then they kept this from me. If the Kabali want to be a part of the Delta Quadrant community, they need to be more forthcoming about who they're adding to their families. These men and women aren't getting a choice. Maybe rebirth is a gift, but it's a gift people should have the right to reject. Agreed. And we've seen how the Vardwar have been treating the situation. And most of us in Starfleet have also agreed that the Kerbali are preferable to siding with the Vardwar. But is that just because it's not our own dead they've been taking? Seeing it happen first hand and so personally is rather shocking, although the idea of rebirth being offered is kind of how it should have been from the start, in my opinion. But what's done is done. Canel will also have to answer for things as well. Even though the Kabali aren't exactly practiced in the art of alliances, they need to drop the secretive act, especially around this sort of thing. It will only cause more problems down the line. After a while, everyone returns to their ships. Ketan has been sent back to Kabali Prime to finish the process of rebirth. In the meantime, the Kabali have agreed to make their list of currently held bodies public knowledge. Anyone who wishes for their dead not to be turned into Kabali will have the body returned to them. Thank you for all your help with this. This was very personal for me to deal with, and I'm glad I had someone like you at my side to help me through it. With that, we close this strange chapter of the Delta Quadrant arc. Next up, we'll be setting the stage for the Iconian War as it all comes to a head, as well as a choice I'm handing over to the viewers of the story series. So thank you for watching the Kabali Vardwa arc, the Delta Alliance and the Lost Chapters of the ever-expanding narrative of Star Trek Online. I hope to see you back for the next episode, and until then I've been Rick, thanks again, and goodbye.